Welcome to a new video on the Photography Minimalist. You know, 10 years ago you could find a budget SLR camera probably every day. Five years ago it would probably be once a week. And nowadays, if you're lucky, you'll find a budget priced SLR maybe once a month. And this was the case on Thursday the 5th of March when I walked into a thrift store together with my wife and I immediately walked over to the cabinet which had all the cameras. A lens pointing at me immediately caught my attention and I had a closer look you know I thought wow I see a price ticket of nine euros and fifty cents so that's probably something like US dollars 1050 so I asked the sales lady to open the cabinet I reached out and I picked up a Canon EOS 30 or an Elan 7E including a 28 to 135 image stabilized lens with a ticket price of 9 euros 50 so I had a good look at the camera and it's in very good condition including the lens and also a 72 millimeter UV filter no batteries in the camera so I wasn't able to test the camera if it was in working condition but I thought you know 9 euros 50 is worth the risk so I bought the camera talking about a bargain buy those things don't happen to me that often anymore now I looked on YouTube and there are a few reviews quite extensive reviews about this Canon EOS 30 or Elan 7E so I thought let's not make a whole new review of this camera and only focus on those points that people are not telling you about this camera and that are very interesting. I have quite a few of them. I decided to make a two-part video. Part one is going to be having a closer look at this camera and part two I'm actually going to be loading up a roll of Ilford HP5 Plus, taking it out. I'll show you the photos that I've been taking with this camera. That's for a part two. So let's get started. Let's have a closer look at the Canon EOS 30 or the Elan 7E where you see here it weighs in at 1172 grams. This is including the lens. I would like to mention the lens this camera came with. It is a Canon 28 to 135 millimeter zoom lens with a macro. It is an ultrasonic lens and it is image stabilized. We have a switch for manual focus and autofocus and we have a switch to turn off or turn on the image stabilization which is good for two stops. The camera uses two CR123 a batteries. These two batteries can handle up to 115 36 exposure films. An interesting thing with regards to these batteries is the fact that yes they are readily available but another issue is they're quite expensive. So I paid 13 euros for these two batteries making these two batteries more expensive than the camera including the lens. Let's have a look at the left top dial. We have the off switch of course, that's where the camera is at the moment. Then we have what they call a creative mode, which has a program mode, shutter priority, aperture priority, manual, depth of field mode, and a custom function mode. And on the other side we have basic modes or program modes, with a fully program mode, portrait, landscape, macro, moving subjects, and low light mode. A first interesting feature I would like to mention is the film rewind button on the back of the camera. This button enables you to do a mid-roll rewind. That means that you do not have to take all the pictures on your film before it automatically rewinds. You can toggle this switch and go from a high speed rewind to a low speed and what they call silent rewind. On the top of the camera we have a dial 
And if we dial it to custom function, we can also define a function with regards to the film rewind. We can either choose between what I mentioned, a slow rewind, which is silent, or a fast rewind. A second custom function, which we can define, is if we want to rewind the film all the way back into the canister, or leave out the leader of the film out of the canister. That's especially interesting if you want to develop your own film and you do not want to break open the canister, then it's easier to retract the film from the canister. When we use this camera in B bulb mode, we can use the mirror lockup. And that's very interesting for this camera. So first we set the dial to the custom function. And then you see here in the display that we're now on C05 and we see A1. With this dial, we can dial through the different custom functions that are available to us. So I go to C05 and number one means that it's on. And with this little switch on the back, I can go from zero to one. So I can turn it off and turn it on. A very usable function to have a mirror lockup for long exposures. And in combination with the mirror lockup, we can use also the self timer, which we see here on the left top hand. This camera has seven autofocus points, and we have a button here on the top right backhand side, which we press first, after which we can use these four buttons on the back to toggle between the seven different autofocus points. That's not always handy to do, so you can also, again, define a custom function button, which is C11, and C11 gives us option one and option two. Option one is that we can directly choose the autofocus point of our liking by pressing these four buttons for left, right, top and bottom. And if we put it to option two, then we can either use this dial here on the top to choose an autofocus point or the dial on the back to choose the autofocus point. We also have the option of C12. So if we turn it to C12, the custom function, we see we have only one choice, either it's off or it is on. And when we switch it on, we can choose this button here to always immediately go back to our central focus point of the seven focus points that are available to us. One thing I would like to mention with regards to the eye focus function. I'm not going to tell you in detail how to use this eye focus. There's enough information on YouTube already. But what I would like to say is, and many people make the mistake here, is that you can only eye focus on the seven predefined autofocus points in your viewfinder. So you cannot look anywhere in your viewfinder to autofocus with the eye autofocus. Only on the seven predefined autofocus points. Someone mentioned that this camera does not have a spot metering mode, which is correct. The camera has an evaluative, a partial, and a center weighted average metering mode. What is interesting to mention is that if you put the lens to manual focus, then the metering will only concentrate on the very small center focusing point, which actually gives you a spot metering mode. Something to take into account if you want true spot metering, put it to manual, focus, and it will concentrate only on the center focusing point. Another interesting aspect to mention is if you put the switch to one shot focus and the camera detects movement of the subject and it will use its predictive autofocusing then it would automatically switch to the AI servo mode. When you use the basic zone or the program modes, then the camera will automatically activate the flash in low light situations, except for landscape and moving subject or sports photography.
An interesting mode is the night mode or the low light mode. It actually uses a slow sync. So it flashes for your subject, but also uses a slow shutter speed to create a natural looking background. So it balances the exposure between natural light and flash photography. The fully automatic mode and the program mode, the P, automatically determines the shutter speed and the aperture. But there are a lot of differences between using the full auto mode and the P program mode. Let me give you an overview now of all the differences. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that it was informative. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And that way you can keep up to date with all the new videos that I'll be bringing out. Thanks again. See you next time.